you go into such detail about this world. And we were talking earlier about you kind of get a little claustrophobic just reading about it. You feel kind of these walls maybe closing in on mm -hmm. you. How were you able to create that feeling? I don't know. It wasn't conscious. I mean, she is crawling through these ducts, and they're pretty tight because if you look at air vents and things, they're not really big. But she's not a very big person either. That's why she's picked for this job. And I don't know. I just describe her going through them. And uh, like I told you, the one lady reader, she, she had a hard time reading those passages because she was claustrophobic. And on the website, the What's Inside Out website, there's a quiz that you can answer questions and find out what type of scrub you would be in this world. And one of the questions has to deal with claustrophobia. And it's like, you know, how claustrophobic are you? If you're really claustrophobic, then you wouldn't be good as an air scrub then. No, and I love, I love the term scrub because that's scrub. really what they do. Is right. their, it's their entire duty in life to clean. Right. Right. To make to make the it in, an inhabitable for the uppers because right. it, in a way they seem to be the most important part of the society even though they don't have any connection to the scrubs to the people cleaning right they, yeah the uppers are in charge of the you know the world like the politics and the maintenance you know they're the ones at the computers making sure that all the systems are are working fine and the scrubs are more like the worker ants. Like you don't really see them, they're like in the walls and they're like cleaning or doing whatever. Or maybe termites, you know, going in unseen and doing their stuff. I guess that's not really white because they're helping, not hurting. <laughs> but, but still, they are, they are very much the unseen. And um, right. Trella, the, the mm -hmm. main character, she uh, for a while wants to be unseen. That, that's something she, she wants to kind of fade in the background. She doesn't right. want to be a part of this. Right. But then something happens to change that. Yes. Yes, something happens. <laughs> and she, see? yeah, well, she becomes uh, kind of by default on accident, I guess. She becomes the leader of this movement to kind of help right. the scrubs escape. Right, right. She wants to, there's always like these prophets in there that are always singing, you know, a better place. And the one prophet comes along and says, there's a gateway, a gateway to outside. And they've forgotten what outside is. So he, he asked her to go get his, he has information on some discs, and he wants her to do it because she knows all the, all the air ducts, and she can climb up between the levels without being seen. So at first she's not going to do it, but she's the type of person that if you give her a challenge, she's going to do it. Uh, just, just by telling her she can't do it, it was just like automatically, well, then no, I'm going to do it then. So, um, so then she does go and get the information to find this gateway, and it, Basically, the book is about trying to find the gateway. And that's why I say Logan's Run, because they were looking for sanctuary. And uh, it's a similar thing, but it's a very different. What's outside, you know, Logan's Run, it was the planet. Well, mine's a little different than that, but I won't say. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I really like, um, because at first, like I said, we don't, we don't necessarily really get attached to Trello. We don't necessarily really understand because she is a very kind of harder character to really mm -hmm. get, get in her mindset. But then as we go through and as she takes over this responsibility and she starts to gather up this, this group mm -hmm. around her, um, including Riley, her love interest, mm -hmm. she starts to gather up this group around her and, and they start looking up to her. She really takes on that mantle and she really is able to succeed as this leader at a very young age, mm -hmm. um, she's really working, it, it turns from, oh, this is just a challenge that I'm gonna overcome, to mm -hmm. I'm gonna help these people. I'm gonna make this happen. Right. And she has a lot of, a, a lot of uh, self-confidence, which I, which I really enjoyed. That's great, yeah, she, um, she learns that, you know, what she thought the uppers were so privileged and it was so wonderful up there that it, it really isn't. And she does learn that. She learns how to trust people. And, and yeah, that's her whole character arc there, from going from not wanting to be around anybody or helping anybody into this role, which, which she takes on. She, you know, she's not shy. No, not at all. <laughs> now, at the end, um, I'm not going to give it away because there is the ending was probably my, my favorite part. Okay. Like, it all came together, and I was like, oh, that's so great. Oh, I won't give that away. <laughs> However, I will say that there is a definite room for a sequel there. You definitely open up something at the end that, that leads to this whole nother realm. Right. So are we going to see a sequel to the book? You are. Uh, it's called Outside In, and <laughs> okay. it's coming out... At, Last I heard was early 2011, like March 2011, and I'm working on it right now. So it's actually due to my editor, like in a couple of weeks. Any spoilers you can give? Are we gonna obviously we're gonna see more Trella? I'm assuming. Yes, yes. You and more Riley. Yes, more Trella, more Riley, uh, more of the main characters, uh, Logan and Anne Jade, and um, 
those people and the and the doctor, Dr. Lamont, um, they'll all be in it. it. It's just what happens after, you know, it's sort of like, you know, happily ever after, really, but, you know, what goes on next, so.